What's up guys, this is Xander Bennett from Rare Candy here, and today we are going to do something really unique, and we get an opportunity to talk about the recent Japanese tournament uh, deck. It was not a Nationals, it was a Champions League, but there were uh, 1,250 players, so it is a huge tournament that we have a bunch of really unique decks for. This goes all the way out to um, what would be our Lost Thunder. So what we're going to get in the next set for them, it is Super Boost Impact, um, as well with Fairy Rise and some of the other mini sets that are going to combine into Lost Thunder. But this is an interesting look ahead about what our metagame could look like with these new sets coming out. And um, if you've ever looked at Japanese tournament results before, they are really unique and they play a bunch of crazy stuff. So I am very excited to get to look at some of these decks. Um, all of these lists uh, have been provided on Limitless TCG. It's a great resource that I use commonly. Um, so if you wanna see more of the lists uh, than the ones that we cover here, feel free to check out that website. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so first we have the winning deck. Um, this is gonna look pretty similar to something that we've seen here in the States. It's a Malamar deck, but with some, uh, with some new cards from um, what will be our Lost Thunder set. The main one being this Giratina. Giratina is a 130 HP Psychic Basic that has an ability that says once during your turn if this card is in your discard, you may put it onto your bench, then put one damage counter on two of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Then for Psychic Psychic Colorless, you do 130 and you put four damage counters on one of your Pokemon. So basically what it is, is it's a reoccurring, really strong threat that after it gets knocked out, it immediately goes right back onto your bench so you can use it again and you can start using Psychic Recharge onto it. And between the ability and um, another card that we'll talk about here in a minute, you have a lot of potential to spread damage around. That card that I'm talking about is Spell Tag. It is a tool from the new set. It says if the Psychic Pokemon this card is attached to gets knocked out by damage from your opponent's attack, put four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon any way you like. So between Giratina and the one copy of Shrine of Punishment this deck plays, you do have a really strong ability to spread out damage. The deck also plays a Shining Arceus, which is a card that has been seeing more talk recently. It is a 130 HP colorless Pokemon with the ability Fable Defense. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, prevent all damage done to your bench Pokemon by your opponent's attacks. And then for four colorless, you do 30 to each of your opponent's Pokemon. So just allows you to continue setting up that math against other decks and this does feel like it would be a little bit soft to Zorark probably really strong against everything else but there's a new onyx that comes out it's honestly hilarious it is a 120 HP basic fighting Pokemon that for four colorless does 120 and that's it but with two double colorless in the list and psychic recharge you can get four energy on there pretty easily and that one shots a Zorark clean so I think this deck is really cool I expect to see something very similar to this as uh, we're already kind of seeing some Shrine Malamar decks with Tabu Koko and Lugia. This seems like it might be a step up from that. Um, Giratina does have an ability, so it might make Shining Lugia pretty good against it. And then you can you do 120, and then maybe you could do some weird math with your own Giratina to put the final 10 on it. But I think that this deck is really cool, and uh, we will be seeing decks like this. All right, the second place deck is Blacephalon Naganadel. It's kind of a, a tough toughy to pronounce, but this is a super cool deck that um, this list got second in. Um, their master's division, but uh, in juniors and seniors it got first um, all the lists were different But uh, the one that we'll be highlighting is the master's one and the deck is very straightforward It focuses on Blacephalon GX which the main attack that I want to talk about for two fires You do 50 damage times the number of fire energy you put from in play to your loss zone so seems pretty hard to chain but um, you have a really unique ability with Nogadadel. It is a stage 1, 100, 130 HP psychic Pokemon with the ability charge up. Once during your turn, you may attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to this Pokemon. And that is super cool because it means that we have a really easy way to put energy onto our Pokemon. So outside of that, there's one Kiawe, which just if you go first, you just put four energy on the board immediately. There's also Acrobike and Beast Ring to help you put even more energy in play. And then there's this new Heat Factory Prism Star, which is a stadium that says once during each player's turn, that player may discard a fire energy card from their hand to draw three cards. While this card is in play, whenever your opponent plays a supporter or item card from their hand, prevent all effects of that card turned to this card. So effectively, the only way that these new Prism Star stadiums, which is not the only one that we'll talk about, can be removed will be by someone playing a stadium. So 
this deck between having Mysterious Treasure and Ultra Ball and that stadium gets energy in the discard and Acrobite gets energy in the discard really easily for Basluffon. And the deck plays 17 energy, 16 fire, 1 beast, so you have no shortage of energy. Um, you can also attack with Nogadel versus things like Buzzwell, just because it's a 130 HP beat stick. Uh, for three colorless, it does 80, and if you have exactly three prizes, it does 80 more, but I don't see that coming up often. The coolest card in this list is Sightseer. Sightseer is a new supporter. You draw until you have five cards in your hand, but before drawing, you may discard as many cards in your hand as you like. So... With a deck like this, you can kind of just throw away your entire hand most of the time. There's not a lot of stuff that you really care about resource-wise. So you just discard your whole hand, draw up to five, and that's a really easy way to get more energy into the discard pile because this deck is going to need to constantly be getting energy in the discard pile to attach it with Nogginadel because the energies go to the Lost Zone. They don't go to the um, discard pile after they're being used. So I think this deck is really unique and definitely something that we can see do well in the States. It's a very fast deck. Seems like it has really good matchups around the board, and I'm excited to see what this style of deck can do. All right, I'm going to skip around a little bit because um, this deck got third, but we do not have the third place list. We have the seventh place list. So this is Buzzwell Alola Ninetales GX. So uh, it just uses Buzzwell GX that we've known for a while and Baby Buzzwell, along with the new Alola Ninetales GX from Fairy Rise, and it is a very good card. It's a Fairy 200 HP Stage 1 with the ability that uh, whenever you evolve it, you search your deck for two items and you put them into your hand. Um, and then the both the attacks are very good also. For Fairy Colorless, you do 70 and then 30 to one on their bench. And then for Fairy Colorless, uh, as the GX attack, if they're a GX, they are knocked out automatically. So this card is really good and has two super solid attacks. I expect this card to be everywhere once it uh, comes out. So definitely want to pick these up. But you it allows you to search your deck for um, Beast Rings, for choice bands, for um, just more ways to, you, you can just get switches if you need a switch. Um, and then there's this really cool card called Custom Catcher. Uh, you may play two Custom Catcher at once. If you play one, you draw until you have three cards in your hand. So you get to kind of instruct. And if you play two of them, you switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon. So if you have one in your hand, you have this Alola Ninetales, you can get a Beast Ring and a Custom Catcher. And then you play the two Custom Catchers, bring up whatever you want in their bench and then play the Beast Ring and just kill that thing. And it seems like a really good engine to just knock stuff out really easily. The deck also has the uh, Fairy, Dark, and Fighting unit energy to make use of to attack with that Ninetales GX in the mirror. So uh, the deck just feels very solid with a bunch of matchups around the board. It, in terms of unique cards, it does play uh, Lycia, which is a card that we got in Celestial Storm that hasn't been seeing much talk. You search your deck for two Prism Stars and put them into your hand as a supporter. And then you have uh, Diancy Prism Star, you have Beast Energy Prism Star, but you also have this new Lucivine Prism Star. You can only play this card if your opponent has exactly three prize cards. And then during your opponent's next turn, you prevent all damage to from your opponent's Pokemon's attacks done to all of your Ultra Beast Pokemon. So if your Ultra Beasts are active or on the bench, it doesn't matter. Any attack that they do, you prevent all effects of it if your opponent has exactly three prize cards left. So that number works out really well because if you're facing a Zorak deck and you go first, you jet punch, you take a knockout, and then the next thing they're going to knock out is probably going to be a, or, I'm sorry, I got it backwards. It's if they have three prize cards left. But uh, either way, I still think this card's really solid. You have that uh, Lycia to search for it, and there's not really a whole lot that they can do to play around it. So um, just a really interesting deck that abuses Custom Catcher and Beast Ring, just allows you to do really just strong stuff through the course of the game. All right, so the next deck that we're going to talk about is Alolan Exeggutor Sceptile GX. This is the Alolan Exeggutor from Forbidden Light with the attack Tropical Shake. It, for one grass, you do 20 plus 20 for each different type of energy in your discard pile, uh, each different type of basic energy in your discard pile, and you can only add 180 damage in this way. So you cap out at 120, 150 with Choice Band. You have some other modifiers in here. Combined with... Sceptile GX. It's a 2-2-2 two, two, two line, no rare candies. The gro the Grovile is pretty good too. Its ability, you search your deck for a grass Pokemon, you reveal it and put it into your hand. So that's really good for allowing you to chain these Exeggutors, put them into play. And then there's also two good Sceptiles. The first Sceptile is the one that we got out of Celestial Storm that um, you prevent all damage done to your Pokemon that have any grass energies to them by attacks of your opponent's be uh, Ultra Beasts. So that's really solid to be able to stop Buzzwool decks to maybe even stop uh, Blacephalon decks, just be able to um, make it difficult for them to deal with your Pokemon that have Grass Energy on them. 
And uh, I don't think you're ever going to be really using that attack, so I'm just going to ignore it. But the Sceptile GX is new, is new and from Fairy Rise, I believe. It is a 230 HP Stage 2 Grass Pokemon. That uh, it ha Its first attack for a Grass is Mock Cut. It's 60, and you discard a special energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon, so that's always been good. For two Grass, you do 130, and you move a Grass from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon. And then for one Grass, you heal all damage from all of your Pokemon with Grass energy attached to them. So the deck just seems to uh, want to get a bunch of different types of energy in the discard pile to use a Lolan Executor, and then later on in the game you can kind of sweep with a big Subtile GX that they can't deal with. There is also uh, the Lorantis promo that we have over here already, where your Grass and Fire Pokemon do 20 more damage. That allows you to hit 170 on certain things. And then in terms of ways to get stuff in the discard pile, this deck has Sightseer, it has Ultra Ball, and um, this is unrelated, but there's this new card called Netball that's uh, really cool too. You search your deck for either a basic grass Pokemon or a basic grass energy and reveal it, put it into your hand, shovel your deck afterwards. So that lets you get your Executes and your Tricos and uh, your Fomantis really easily, but then later on in the game when you don't need it anymore, you can just get energy. Um, the one card that I'm very confused that this deck did not play is a Shuckle, which we should also get in Lost Thunder. It has an ability that whenever you bench it, you search your deck for three basic energy cards and you discard them. So that just feels very synergistic with a Lone Executor. So I don't know why that wasn't ran. Um, maybe Sightseer and Ultra Ball are good enough, but that doesn't make sense to me. I feel like that's such a good consistency card that um, it just lets you expedite your damage rate really fast. And then there's also Ditto Prism Star to allow you some shenanigans with Lorantis and uh, getting more basics for all the rest of your stuff. But we'll talk about Ditto Prism later because Ditto Prism is such a unique card that uh, allows a lot of decks to exist. So uh, I think this deck is cool. Uh, I definitely think it's more creative than the other ones, and uh, I like, I've always liked the Lone Executor. I bought a 4-4 reverse playset as soon as it came out, just to, just in case anything came up out of it. So um, I hope this deck takes off. It also plays 4 Shrine, so that lets you fix some of your math, maybe do some bigger things. But no, this deck's really unique, and uh, I definitely hope it sees some play in the future. Alright, so the last of the decks that we have lists for that made top 8 is uh it's Zorak Lycanroc, but it's Zorak Lycanroc with a bunch of cool twists. This is the deck that lets you really abuse the power of Ditto Prism Star. It's a 40 HP basic that says uh it has an ability and that's all that it has. It says once during your turn you may put a stage one evolution card from your hand on this Pokemon to evolve it. You can't use this ability during your first turn or the turn this Pokemon was put into play. So essentially anytime that you could evolve one of your Pokemon you evolve it into a stage one Pokemon. Um so you have Zorak GX, you have Lycanroc GX, you have Mag Cargo, and you have Weavile in this deck. So that's four different Stage 1s that this Ditto can conveniently turn into whenever you need it. So it gives you just an extra basic of each of those. So the deck only plays a 2-2 Lycanroc line, but with the Ditto Prism, you also have uh, that third copy. You play a 1-1 Mag Cargo, but with Ditto Prism, you have a second Slugma, and with, you have a 1-1 Weavile, but with the Ditto Prism, it turns into a 2-1 Weavile. So... Just gives you a ton of consistency, and uh, you have the ability to get it off of this new card called Professor Elm's Lecture. Uh, this is a card that a lot of people are excited about already. You search your deck for three Pokemon with 60 HP or less, reveal them, and put them into your hand. So you can get uh, Ditto and Zerua and Rockruff. Actually makes you want to play the 60 HP Rockruff again in, in decks like this. So that seems like a really strong card. Outside of this, though, the only thing I haven't talked about with this deck is Counter Gain. It is a new tool card that says as long as you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, the attacks of the Pokemon, this card is attached to you, cost one colorless less. And it does not specify GXs. So this is really good with Dangerous Rogue because you attach it onto your Lycanroc and then you attach a Fighting and you can use Dangerous Rogue in one turn. One of the biggest um, problems that Zorak Lycanroc has had is that you always want to get that really early attachment onto Rockruff so that whenever you need a dangerous rogue, you always could. But now with this counter gain, you can just attach the counter gain, attach a f fighting energy to it, and then be able to do that 200 or 250 damage just immediately as soon as possible and get your free knockout out of the way. And you can search for it with Mag Cargo. So whatever turn you need it, you can play Judge with a list played four copies of Judge. Then you smooth over, then you use Trade, and then you take the knockout. And that sounds like having three different stage ones in play, but Ditto Prism allows you to make it much more flexible to do that. So this deck is really cool, and I definitely think Zorak Lagenrock is going to take off by storm with Ditto Prism. So very excited to see where we go with this.
All right, we are out of top eight, and here is the ninth place deck. And this deck is insane. There is so much stuff to talk about. It is Grand Roll Mag Cargo. So, Grand Roll is a new card that we'll get in Lost Thunder. For one fairy, you do 30, and if you have no cards in your hand, you do 130 more. So, you do 160 for one if you have no cards in hand. So, with a choice band, you're already knocking out Buzzwool. Even without it, you're one shotting a Rayquaza or an Ultra Necrozma for one energy just because of weakness. So this card adds up a lot of damage super fast. Um, and that's the main attack of this deck is trying to use over and over again. So you have Mag Cargo to stack the top of your deck. You have three copies of Oranguru for Instruct to draw up to three cards so that whenever you play your hand down to zero, you can work your way back up. But the whole point of the rest of the deck is to get your hand to zero cards every single turn so that you can use his attack while also doing other stuff. So it's so unique in how it's built. You play four Apricorn Maker so that you can search for Ultra Ball if you need to. So you can Ultra Ball down to zero cards. That's one way to get to zero cards. You play Lost Mixer, which is a new card that you put two cards from your hand into the Lost Zone, and then you draw a card. So if you instruct a three, then you play Lost Mixer. You just put the other two cards into the Lost Zone, and then you draw a card, and... If you instruct and then you smooth over, you know that you're going to go into a card that you can play. So then at that point, you're back to zero cards. Um, but then you also just have a lot of cards that you can play as soon as you see them. You have four Ultra Ball, four Nest Ball, four Great Ball, just cards that you can immediately get out of your hand. Four Rescue Stretcher to get back your Pokemon because it's only a 4-4 four, four of the attacker. So if you prize a, uh, a few of those, you might be stuck. You even play one Mysterious Treasure just to discard cards and there are no psychic pokemon in this deck or dragon pokemon that's the funniest thing about it is just that you're trying to get to zero cards so badly every turn and then outside of that you have three copies of shrine of punishment just trying to make it so that you can um fix those numbers whenever you need it so if you do 190 to a zorak because no cards in a choice band they take they go to 200 going into their turn and they go to 210 coming back into your turn so they have to send up a new pokemon for you to take that knockout on so I think this deck is so unique, and I am going to try this deck a lot because it just seems so much fun. It probably is the most fun of all the decks that we have seen so far. Just so unique in what it's doing, and uh, I'm really excited for this one. All right, I'm not going to talk about this deck for a long time because it's pretty similar to some others we've talked about, but this is Zorog Ninetales. This is another way to use Ninetales GX in the new format. Um, in this deck, Ninetales GX just turns into more consistency. It allows you to get more Ultra Balls and Nest Balls, but also just utility with a Rescue Stretcher, Field Blower, Energy Lotto, and then some random one-ofs like Enhanced Hammer, Counter Gain, and Bodybuilding Dumbbell. So you uh, get consistency just being able to get whatever tool you want, but also you have the ability to one-shot an Ultra Beast, and then doing 70 and 30 sets up math for you for the rest of your deck. So if you do the 30 onto a bench like Buzzle GX, they have 160, then you're just a choice Kakui away from knocking out that Pokemon. So that's some pretty solid math that you can do with Ninetales GX as an attacker. And then you can do that for one energy with counter gain if you're behind on prizes. The unit energy allows you access to a 1-1 Lycanroc GX and Buzzwool. And then Ditto Prism Star ties it all together. And so there's nothing that special about this deck. It's just a really interesting way, again, to use a level Ninetales GX. That card's just going to find its way into a ton of decks. And um, whether or not they play Fairy Energies or not, just being able to switch your deck for two items just has a, offers a lot of consistency. Um... We haven't seen a lot of Stage 2 decks yet, and I'm not sure if we will. Oh, no, we will um, pretty soon. Um, but being able to get like Rare Candy and a Timer Ball or an Ultra Ball to get to your Stage 2 just um, gives that card so much versatility and viability for uh, tournaments to come. So uh, the deck that I just mentioned that would be playing uh, Stage 2s of Lola Ninetales GX, here it is. It is Decidueye Ninetales. This is... Uh, or Decidueye... Yeah, Decidueye Ninetales... Um, I was just laughing because there's already been a Decidueye Ninetales deck, but this is a different Ninetales now. Um, this is the deck that Shintaro Ito played to get 17th. He was the uh, 2016 world champion with a Mega Autono, but um, the deck plays a 4-0-4 Decidueye line because you have Alola Ninetales to search out for your rare candy, so you're almost always going to get that. And then you play a 3-2 Alola Ninetales GX. You also have the Beacon Vulpix, which is another really incentivizing card for the Ninetales GX decks. Because you just beacon for your stage twos, and then you evolve into nine tails. You use the ability, and you get two rare candies. And now you got two stage twos in play, so that is super cool. You also have a one zero one Swampert line because you can do crazy consistency things like that with uh, Professor Elm's lecture and uh, 
Beacon and Lola Ninetales. Swampert has ability to discard a card from your hand and draw three cards, so it's a super trade, and that just lets you draw a bunch of cards. And there's this really cool Larvitar from uh, Sun and Moon 8. Uh, for a DCE, it has second strike. If your opponent's active Pokemon has three or more damage counters on it, this attack does 70 more damage. So against a Zorark, if they have three damage counters on them, they have 180 HP left. So they'll be doing 160 to them. So then one Decidueye Snipe more will put them in knockout range. So either that or a Snipe from a Lola Ninetales GX. You have a lot of ways to set that up, and that's a really easy way to um, get that knockout on that Pokemon. But outside of that, Ninetales is such a toolbox card in this deck. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine one ofs, of which there is a new card called Energy Spinner. You uh, search your deck for a basic energy card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then you shovel your deck. And if you went second and it's your first turn, you may search your deck for three basic energy cards instead. So I definitely think this is a gym promo that Japan gets that we're not going to get. But either way, just a neat little card to show off, um, just allowing you to get a bunch of energies into your hand. And the deck gets so many stage twos out with no stage ones at all that you play Super Boost Energy Prism Star, which barely sees play. Um, it provides a colorless energy, uh, except when it's attached to a stage two, it provides a colorless energy of any type. But if you have three or more stage twos in play, it counts as four energy at a time. So that lets you power up any of your attackers in one shot. Even a Swampert could attack and do 160 if you have that out because it counts as four water energies. So I definitely think this deck has uh, a ton of possibility because the Lola Ninetales GX just makes it so ridiculously easy to get your stage two Pokemon into play. So very excited about this deck. Just a lot of really cool stuff going on. I know I keep saying that, but there's just so much uniqueness with this tournament. I love looking at Japanese tournaments. I'm very excited for uh, the future of what we have to come. All right, this is the last deck that I'm going to talk about um, in full today, but this is uh, it's a spread deck with Tapu Koko, Honchkrow, and Weavile. So we know what Tapu Koko and Weavile do. We've seen them recently. This deck plays both Weaviles, both the uh, Rule of Evil Weavile and the Evil Admonition Weavile, but it plays two of the Rule of Evil Weavile, which uh, is a little bit backwards from what you might expect, uh, along with Honchkrow from Guardians Rising. So this is a 110 HP Stage 1 Pokemon that um, if uh, for a double colorless, you do 10 plus 10 for each damage counter on all of your opponent's Pokemon. So between Rule of Evil to put 60 on each of your opponent's Pokemon with an ability, you have Flying Flip to just put 20 on all of your opponent's Pokemon, and then you have Shrine of Punishment. This damage can add up really fast and allow you to just do some insane stuff. The deck plays four double colorless, four counter, and two dark energy because you're probably going to be behind from whenever you are using Tapu Koko just to spread the damage to set it up. And then Honchkrow just comes through, and it sweeps the entire rest of the board. This deck made top 32, and it was the only deck that saw play of um, its kind in the top 32. The unique thing about this deck that I wanted to touch on is that everything in this deck is already in standard, and there are no Tapu Lele's in this deck. So the most expensive card in this deck right now is Shrine of Punishment, which is, I think, go going around $8 at the time of this video. Cynthia's and Guzma's are down, uh, so no GX's, and... Um, pretty cheap overall so if you're looking if you're watching this channel thinking man i want to get into pokemon but i don't really know what i want to play because it might be expensive this is a great place to start um or at least to think about because it showed up at that tournament it might be a little bit easier in a best of three setting than a best of one setting because in a best of three you can kind of figure out what's going on play around it a little bit but the deck is really cool and a solid way for newer players to get into the game maybe if you're looking to build a deck for a friend this would be a good way to do that well, alrighty guys, that is all of the uh, deck lists that we have access to. There are more of certain decks that um, are just redundant copies, so I'm not going to explain every single one of those, but there was a Lost March deck in Top 32 that people are talking about with uh, Jump Bluff and Natu, as well as a straight Mag Cargo GX deck, but we don't have lists for either of those, so you might want to go into the Think Tank and work on those a little bit, but... I think this tournament has been really exciting overall. It's just so much fun looking at all these decks. And I just wish that we knew what even more of these players were playing. If we went out to even top 64, just it, what more random stuff would we see? But I think it's really cool. Talk about it in the comments. What's your favorite deck that you have seen here? What would you do different from any of these lists? Is there a card that they might have even forgotten in their bigger format that, um, that they could put in? Or what would you do to the list yourself maybe? Is there something that you want to change? But um, post it in the comments. 
And uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. You can see updates about uh, myself, Eric, and Kenneth on those, as well as um, our Patreon. We, we love our Patreon followers, and I'm going to be uploading an article sometime in the next week or so about my League Cup winning list that I played to win the Severe League Cup. So uh, once again, thank you guys for sticking with me for this half hour of uh, listening to me ramble about these really cool Japanese decks that I'm so excited for. Just uh, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments. And Xander Bennett signing out from Air Candy. Thank you.